Okay guys, this is uh, Landville Caverns and uh, you go in here, tickets like 13 bucks. You got a tour guide that takes you down. It's about a half a mile they said, I think, uh, underground, but that includes the top of the mountain too, so. And anyway, we've got the video, a little bit of that, and uh, it's a natural cavern, unlike uh, most caverns, uh, and it had much done to it other than making it accessible. So let me go ahead and take this moment to just uh, let you guys know, these are rocks. They're not soft and they don't move unless they're jumping out in front of you. So just watch our heads as we're coming through. Okay. So, Looks pretty here inside the cavern. Yeah. That's why we like to call it that. Um, but it actually, if you look under here, you'll see where the floor is actually eroding away. Definitely why we want to keep a big group out of there. Everybody falls through, so. Hey guys, we're going to continue around down this way. We have a lot of little hanging rocks too, right? So just watch your heads for me. That was in the 40s, you said? 1940, yep. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm going to get y'all's attention right up behind me real quick. So, if you guys want to kind of pile in. Oh, okay. you guys can okay. Yeah, perfect. All right, we're going to take a look at another flowstone formation. Um, this is something, it's a little bit like looking at clouds, so just bear with me. We're going to, I'm going to try to describe it to you. Still kind of have to use your imagination there. So, but right up here, we have the curtains hanging off the stage of our wedding. Up there in the middle, we have the altar. And to the left of the altar, we have the priest. Some people think it looks like Jesus or Moses. He's got a staff and his robes and his beard. Mm -hmm. And to the right, we have the husband, uh, right of the altar, excuse me, we have the husband. It looks like he's kneeling down and the bride's head on his shoulder. Yeah, I worked here for almost a month and I just figured that out today. Like, I was just able to see it today, so. <laughs> <laughs> right over here, I like to say that's the mother-in-law's nose, putting her nose in the wedding, making sure it goes the way she wants to. Like I said, a lot of lame jokes coming up. <laughs> and up top, we even have some bony fingers reaching down. Hopefully not already doing the marriage, but I guess we'll never know because it's set in stone. <laughs> yes. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Um, Little narrows out here. So you guys can see is a 
Watch your heads. And you can go all the way down to the end form, please. Mm -hmm. See our little salamander in there? Yeah. Oh, cute pie. <laughs> yeah, there are over 250 different species of salamanders in the Smokies. It's amazing. In the Smokies, wow. Yeah, more than any place in the world. Wow, that is impressive. All right, y'all, all the way down. And you guys can go ahead and touch the walls if you'd like to. Feels the same here as it does everywhere in the cabin, so if you want to go, just go ahead and touch. Okay, now we're going to go down as well. A limestone next to it all got eroded away. So with a smaller group, this is my favorite area to show you guys um, some tubular stalactites. So stalactites are sticking tight to the ceiling. Um, and these tubular stalactites are also called soda straw stalactites. They're, they form hollow. All right, you guys can come on in. I want the odor and I don't fight, so we're good. <laughs> um, this is actually my favorite area to show you guys the difference between the flowstone and the mother rocks. I've been talking a lot about flowstone, and I'll tell you a little bit about how it's made. So, all those cracks and crevices in the ceiling will have water that comes down and picks up minerals along the way. Now, once it gets down here, the water is pretty much saturated with those minerals, so it gets too heavy. So it starts depositing those minerals, and it'll do it on the mother rock layer after layer, and it'll harden each time, creating these different types of flowstone that we've been seeing. So everything that's growing in the caverns is due to the flowstone. Now, as for everything that's been eroded away, as you guys can see here on the bottom, we have the gray. That is going to be your mother rock of limbal patterns. About 85% of it is called shady dolomite, and it's a incredibly porous, water-soluble type of limestone. It's pretty specific to the tri-state area, so Virginia, Tennessee, and North Carolina. It's all kind of right in that area there. Um, and as I said, everything is copper. Now, I do have some right over here to show you guys. So, as you guys can tell, it looks a bit like the Statue of Liberty. She's made of mm -hmm. copper as well. Um, and then up here we have some, some more colors, a little hard to distinguish, but I'm just going to point them out to you guys. We have some gray, and the gray is coming from the dissolving manganese, or the dissolving limestone. It is, it is manganese. Then over here we have some lighter blue, that is going to be your cobalt, and your darker blue is going to be your zinc. So here in just a moment, guys, we're going to be coming around this corner and down some steps. They do get slick. There's a hand rub, there's a rock that kind of hangs over it, so just be careful on your way down um, if you will follow me. So, right now we are about as uh, far back in the caverns as we will be going. Um, we're about half a mile underground and about 700 feet away from the door. And the caverns actually do extend another 600 feet on down this way, um, where it ends at the signature pool. And it's called that because uh, back in the days of the early explorers, you guys can come in here. Back in the days of the early explorers, we had uh, a group led in here. Personally, I think it looks like Slimer from Ghostbusters. Gotcha. Yeah. Right. yeah. My manager sees an elephant kind of ear on either side and the trunk and tusks mm -hmm. and everything in it. Well, um, funny story about this is we actually call it, guess what? That's not a question, it's a statement. We just call it that because everybody has a different opinion. So we have a hard time giving it one name without so many objections. So we just kind of mm -hmm. let everybody name it as they come in. Um, but guess what is our largest and oldest stalactite? So it is hanging from the ceiling and actually he's kind of hanging from the corner there, so he's also hanging off the wall. But the water will come down on him, deposit its mineral somewhere along the way, and the water drips off of the bottom there. Now, unfortunately, guess what color is not due to minerals? It's actually due to moss and algae, which doesn't typically flourish in a cavern due to it being cold and wet. However, the heat from the artificial lights makes it warm and wet, and burn algae loves, of course. Um, but one other thing I want you guys to take a look at, and guess what, is right up here. We all see that dark brown black color at the top there. Unfortunately, that is the same thing that has happened down the bottom of this pool. Um, so hopefully it's before people realize how damaged it was, but people just come by and just run their hands all over it. Mm. And as you guys can see, it's really damaged the rock. It doesn't grow in that area, but it will continue to bow out down here. And even algae having a bit of a hard time growing in that area because their light just wouldn't make it up that far. Mm -hmm. But just put yourselves in the shoes of an early explorer. You're coming through and you um, water running across the entire floor. You slip and fall and drop your lantern and Oh, I see a phone screen, turn it off. <laughs> this is what you're dealing with. Um, this is what you have to navigate out of, and this is total darkness. This is what Looks like her heart is broken, and definitely that's the case. That's why she's crying on us. <laughs> so, but that is what we like to uh, kind of brag about. We kind of 
I think he looks like a skeleton. And the only skeleton we have found him in the tavern, so hey, that's can, a good thing. Yeah, you can, you can <laughs> kind of see that. I can. What was that? I can kind of see what you're saying. Oh, yeah. That one's, that one's more of the easier uh, ones to actually visualize uh -huh. a bit. So, guys, we're going to come back under this carnelian just to watch our heads for me. Nice or a granite or something along those lines. We're not entirely sure, of course. We don't take too many specimens in here. Um, but the cool thing about this is this, at one point, is where the cabin floor used to be. So the water did run all the way through here. So this was the stream bed. Um, and as the water was coming through, as I said, this much less water soluble. It eroded all the limestone away from around it. So from the level it was at to the level it's at now. For a while, it's able to erode away at our much less water soluble rock there. So. But you see your extreme, and then you get to see your gradual too. It's very cool. Mm -hmm. So, guys, we're going to continue back on to the fish. These pretty stones here, like a monolith. Mm. Nine ninety-five. Not too bad a price on that. Now these are like twenty-eight fifty. It takes a lot of polished stone. I had a friend used to do that. And this is always real interesting. It's like fifty-eight dollars. These are like uh, fossilized stuff here. Really pretty. Colors. You, you would not believe all the beautiful colors that come out of the uh, earth. And that's like fossilized there. It look like fossil. That's a pretty color here. This is always this is always pretty agate. I've collected a bunch of different types of stones over the years. That's always been one of the prettiest ones. Cut them in half and that's the inside so sparkly. That's about oh, 18 inches high, something like that. A little different color there. That's pretty. Some of the fossilized stuff here, but I've got some of this stuff at home. It's really pretty. Can't really see with that glare, I don't think. It's a little better here. Well, we actually got to see a little bit of the uh, cavern on the inside. You can uh, take pictures and you can uh, video, but you cannot use flash or a light source that damages the inside or whatever you want to call it it's a, that lives inside these caves. <clears throat> this is a, that's where you go in. This is a privately owned. cavern here I made real good time coming from um, Rothaban I can't even pronounce that's such an odd name for me close to uh, Chimney Rock, Linville Caverns entrance. And I think up the road here, 
is Linville Falls. 